Hi guys, I thought I would do a video to show other yams how to integrate the uh, log, the very, very fine log called cloud log. There it is right there in that middle monitor. And integrate that with grid tracker and even have more than one station using it. So I'm going to go through that process. It's a little, little bit confusing, but it isn't too bad once you get the, uh, the gist of it. Now we go over here to cloud log, the X out of that. And we have to assume that you know how to set WSGTX with grid tracker. So we're looking at grid tracker. We go over here to the control icon or the adjustments or the settings icon, I should, I guess I should say. And in this list, you have the various loggers that um, you have set up so that WSJTX, when you hit log QSO, it goes to your various loggers here. You see QRZ.com, Club Log, all the big ones. So I happen to need to use these two. But Cloud Log is um, the one that we want to use. There's been a lot of confusion about what the correct URL is. So the correct URL is HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash and your call sign dot cloud log dot co dot uk slash index. Let's get a little closer here dot php slash api slash qso qso now you what you do is you want to select the log right there that's off but then that's on with your api key the api key is set up over here go into uh into here into my um this happens to be the ham radio club that uses this this station here and use api key that is the api key there that you've created a read and write api key this was created from that so what you do is you copy that to clipboard right there and you come over here and you paste that into the API key. Remember, control V for copy and paste. I tried to use the right click, it wouldn't work on my side, but maybe something in Windows. Now, the third, the station profile ID is essential. If you have several different logbooks, as you see I do here, the log that I want this to go to is log 16. Now here, I'm gonna show you, it took me a long time to find out how to find my log, the name of my log. So you go up here to your um, control panel uh, and cloud log, go to station locations. And there it is, <laughs> right there. The log that I wanna to log to is 16. That's the main, um, this, these are all the club stations that uh, the club call signs for that club, pass call signs and, and current. So ID is 16. So that 16 needs to be in here. And um, when you click test, you'll see that it passes. Now, it doesn't, you don't know which you have to put the correct ID in because if you don't, it'll 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 log to one of the other IDs. Um, it just happened to when I created this cloud log setup here, it created these IDs. So you have to match the ID for the log what you want in cloud cloud log to grid tracker. Now. Here's the extra piece. Let's say that you have 
more than one station. I had to figure this out on my own. You go into um, go into your um, other. I'm going into the other station here, logging in. See, I have dark mode for the other one and light mode for this one. But anyway, um, go into station locations. And down here, and these are all the station locations, which correspond to the various call signs that I had in the past. Um, this is important that you get this. So the ID for, for my uh, main call sign here, my own personal call sign is ID one. So over here, you would put ID one, but there's a little issue. And the issue is this. Grid Tracker will not retain separate settings for um, for the various call signs or various log books or API keys. So there's a different API key for this log too. For this actual actually admin user account, my main one W1AL. Go to API keys, and you see I have a different one. And I already copied and pasted that in here. But um, the, the issue is how to get Grid Tracker to run two instances and have two separate settings. Well, I'm going to show you how. There's an app, it's free, called Sandboxy. So you install Sandboxy very simply. And once it's installed, it'll, it'll come up with a window like this. So what you do is you create two instances of your grid tracker. Um, remember, these uh, particular ones have the settings already, but they have to be kept separate from each other, if you know what I'm saying. So... I have that, let me just look at my properties here. I have this icon that's set up. So, so when you create two instances of um, Grid Tracker, it creates an icon and I just named it that. But when you're in, you drag the icon into Sandboxy use the default and hit OK. It will begin to run Grid Tracker in a second. Oh, where is it? Okay, there it is. See, I have the profile set for 16 for this particular uh, club call in one AC. So 16 is, as I showed you earlier, corresponds to the station profile ID. And that will passes there. But um, the log with that station ID will log all these um, all these QSOs when it's open here. But and here's what you want to be able to do when you want, let's say I want to um, not use that but I want to use my I'm using my regular call sign here. The club is not active at the moment. So I go over here to Grid Tracker. I'm running a separate instance of Grid Tracker. Go into the control panel here and go into logging. And you see the other key separate from the other one. See ID 1. And And you go over to this one. You 
we'll see ID2. You see the two different ones here? There's two, in the yellow box is, is there's the one in sandboxy. See how those have, have the, uh, the different cloud log IDs? And for that matter, a different um, entries for a logbook of the world, or is that just different logbooks altogether for that particular call sign? That way you don't have to keep typing them in every time the club wants to use the station. Same thing, and it can be done with uh, multiple operators this way too. It doesn't have to be a club. And you see how that um, is different. So that's how you have two instances of Grid Tracker with two settings with different logbooks for different stations. I hope this helps you guys. Um, and of course, the two instances of Grid Tracker will help you whether you use Cloud Log or not. But cloud log um, was a little tricky for me to figure out, and I, I did figure it out, and uh, it's working flawlessly now. By the way, let me just shout out cloud log. Um, I would say that it is the best up and coming log book there is. I've used them all. N3FJP is probably the best Windows based one, in my opinion. Um, and that's only 40 bucks. But this cloud log is stupendous, absolutely stupendous. And uh, it, you can automatically upload QSOs from the logbook um, into other logbooks from here. But I prefer to use that for LOTW and cloud log. Uh, excuse me, club log and cloud log. That's where I use here. And because LOTW is basically handled in cloud log. So cloud log does not have um, direct access to club log. So I have to do it in grid tracker and it does not have direct access. Well, I mean, you have to find a way to get from WSJTX into cloud log, and that's what this does. So that's why I had to, you know, since I, I'm using this app anyway, um, I figured, well, I'll use it for cloud, cloud log in cloud log. And cloud log itself will upload QSOs to QRZ, EQSL and LOTW. You could do it either way. You could you could put um, everything and have it all done in Grid Tracker if you wanted. But I, I just wanted to utilize the the Cloud Logs direct facility uh, to see how it goes, and it's been working well. So that's about it for now. I hope you've enjoyed this, and I hope this is of help to you in using WSJTX and Grid Tracker. There's plenty of places on YouTube that'll show you how to use those two together, but I wanted to get really detailed on how you get cloud log, especially with two stations. Okay, thanks guys. Sorry this is so long. We'll see you in the next video.